Well, I've got good news and bad news. This bird took some fire and I thrust a gimbal his toast, which means the only way off this slag heap is gravity. And the good news? That was the good news. <laughs> Want to know the most frustrating thing about this show? No, it's not that. No, it's, it's not that. Like, can you please get it off the screen? Get it off. There. Get it off. Yeah, this is this. <laughs> this is exactly the issue. When we heard that there's going to be a Halo TV show, this is exactly what we thought we'd get. And to be fair, we did get it, you know. Yeah, just, eventually. Just took five episodes to get there. In between that, nothing but pure drivel. Why? Good question. To which I have one or two theories of my own. I'll get to them towards the end of the video. But it is weird that somewhere buried deep within the layers of cringe-inducing dialogue, rice paper thin plot devices, acting so wooden you'd think it was an IKEA commercial, <laughs> and plot twists and see coming so far ahead you'd swear you were clairvoyant. <laughs> somewhere beneath it all, there's a half-decent series to be found. Is unearthing that show doesn't seem to rank anywhere near as high up the showrunner's list of priorities as it should. In fact, that top spot belongs to that ever important quest, at least when it comes to adapting a legendary first person sci fi shooter beloved by a generation of gamers, including yours truly. Oh, yes, yeah. I'm referring to that ever important quest to explore one's feelings. <laughs> Feelings is precisely what you'd be expected to explore in a sci-fi first-person shooter adaptation. Forget action, Forget set pieces, all about how you feel, what you feel, who you feel, when you feel. Wanna know what I feel? Not particularly. I feel these showrunners are having a laugh. At our expense. Well, their expense anyway. Why else did they announce so proudly that they didn't even attempt to play the game before putting this show together? <laughs> I mean, imagine that. Imagine a movie director suddenly announced to the whole world that they're going to do an adaptation of a famous Shakespeare play. Hamlet. Only they've never read the play. Or do they have any desire to read the play? You think Denzel Washington would have nailed the character of Malcolm X had he not absorbed everything he could on the character? Just sat back and said, I'm just going to be me. It's going to be Denzel. My name in the movie, the name's going to be Malcolm X. But you're going to see me. Denzel. After all, he's black. I'm black. It's a black thing. Damn straight. But let's not stop there. I'm going to remake this movie. Only these two actors are going to play my lead. <laughs> you can't do that. What do you mean? Have you even watched the movie? Nope. Never seen it before in my life. Just a cowboy movie, isn't it? About a cowboy. He's broke. Lives up in the mountain. Towards the back. See, we can all play dumb studio executives all day long. It's not going to get us anywhere. You would probably win. We're not going to change the outcome. That outcome being your project is not going to be quite as successful as you think it will be. Although, sitting down to watch this show, suddenly dawns the lack of connection to the original source material is the least of its problem. For me, its biggest issue aside from being somewhat under budgeted at least in the effects department that would be the character of Quan ah uh, yes Quan now, Kwan is played by half Australian, half Korean actress, Yerin Ha. Oh, attractive Asian alert. Can't have that now, can <laughs> we? This is current day Hollywood after all. Well, uh, okay then, but what do we do? I don't know. Get rid of her hair or something. Yeah. And uh, lose the makeup, will ya? Okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh, cheer up. It'll grow back. Eventually. 
That is a common trope used in uh, many a Hollywood tale called Save the Cat. Basically allows the audience to connect with a character as they're introduced to them on an emotional level by demonstrating that character's oh, willingness to save a life of anything, even that of a seemingly insignificant cat stuck in a tree. But the writers of this show opted for an alternative introduction to the character of Quan. In fact, early in the episode one, we have Quan lead a group of merry friends on a drug run. Yes, indeed. Now, edgy, sure, but as bad as endearing as trimming your toenails with a jackhammer. <laughs> now, nothing quite prepares you for just how dangerous a character Quan is. In fact, I'm pretty sure the writers haven't even figured that out. Never yet. before had destruction and disaster followed a character around the way it follows her. <laughs> but don't take my word for it. I told you I'd find it. Magical. The galaxy's highest concentration of heavy hydrogen. Power your ships. Empower your drugs. A few moments later. Yeah, things didn't quite work out for her friend. But Quan survived though. Oh, I mean, she's, she's, she's that's cool. smart too. You know, does the whole hiding behind a rock. Thing. So she sends up a flare to signal her people. And makes her way back to her camp. Alien invasion in tow. A few moments later. Yep, the aliens have followed her, have begun slaughtering her people. So she hides out in a bunker with the rest of the children in the camp. Then sees her old man trapped under a vehicle, decides she's gonna go and try and rescue him. Where are you going? I have to go, I have to help. Are we gonna die? No, oh, of course not. A few moments later. Poor kid, at least you'll never get to experience the disaster that is Halo Infinite's multiplayer. So then the chief arrives and does what the chief does best. More moments later. Such bravado. Wasted. At least he went out like a G. At least I think he did. Well, it happened off screen. So it's, you know, kind of hard to tell. And before long, threat has been neutralized. More or less. Along with 99% of Quan's people. She spots her old man just walking around. Exchange glance, only for him to spot Ooh. another alien walking towards her. So, of course. Naturally. A few moments later. <laughs> Yep, there goes that 1%. So Master Chief decides he's gonna rescue Only her. that, he's gonna take her back to his headquarters personally. Now, this is the part that really turned the character <gasps> sour in the minds of the audience. Well, She's approached by the very same people who sent the Spartans to save her life. Are they asking for money? No. Are they asking for gratitude? Just no. a few words of encouragement for the other colonies who actually bothered to do their homework regarding the Spartans and realize the truth that the entire human race is under threat of extinction. Her reply? My dad spent his life trying to free us from you. And on the day of his murder, how can you ask me to to, to go on camera and... and whoa, 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 hold, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Your dad died because of you. Your people died because of you. Your friends died because of you. The very least you could do is help another colony get a sense of hope. <laughs> but no. Then she really goes off the rails. What if I say the UNSC sent a bunch of Spartans to attack us? Uh, say what? That's not true. They killed over a hundred innocent people. The Spartans are helping! And then you kidnapped me to force me to say it was all the aliens. Oh, the entire encounter was recorded. You people can make video look like anything. Well, you'd, uh... <laughs> you'd think that, wouldn't you? We've seen your Spartan propaganda broadcasts. Um, hold up. Flashback. It's all true. What? What's true? I thought it was UNSC propaganda! End of flashback. You think the outer colonies don't see through that? Dude. You know the threat's real. You just saw your entire colony wiped out for your very eyes. eyes. Why are you saying this? And when they hear my version. Wait, your version? What up? You can forget about unity or whatever. What, what, what? Forget unity? We are talking about the fate of humanity. Yeah. A bit more important than your ego. Those other colonies are going to run from the UNSC as fast as they can. <sighs> you know what? Yeah, I've given up. Now, surprisingly, or not, on route back to base, he suddenly gets this message. Execute 
Order 66. Okay, so he doesn't get that exact. Yeah, that that would be a surprise. Pretty pretty much saying the same thing. But he decides he's going to ignore it completely. So... A few moments later... Take down the oxygen in 1172. Yeah. Well, I guess it seemed a noble idea at the time. Right, Master Chief? Flash forward in time and he's dropped her off at an old friend look after. Can't say I blame who him. She somehow manipulates into taking her back to the very planet where people were slaughtered. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just, I don't know. Once there they find out she's a wanted girl. Maybe it's those Paramount Plus subscribers looking for a refund. Either way, she hooks up with what's left of her people that weren't destroyed and the rest of them were. No idea where they were at the time. But anywho, who just happened to be holding a memorial for her father. Very day. Before long, she's dispensed with the pleasantries and has reverted back to her usual charming self. All of you! My dad fought and died so you could all be free. And now you stand and pray and you claim to honor him, but you're all cowards! Then, by sheer coincidence, the entire thing is raided by these Nazi like soldiers. Not that Quan cares. Clearly, she's more interested in the new toy she's found. That will come in handy later. Finally, she hooks up with an aunt who lives nearby. For a long overdue catch up about her old man. Years ago, before the war. Just then, enter an assassin hired to kill Quan. Finally, Finally, we say. As the poor aunt gets it. But, oh, what just before Quan herself gets what many of us believe she had coming. Now, personally, I like to think he was aiming for Quan, but missed due to all the excitement. Mm, but that's just my head cannon. Oh, she's bad, all right. Yeah, let that hairstyle fool you. She'll put a world of hurt on you. My advice to Master Chief FedEx, sir, to the Covenant headquarters: sit back and watch the whole thing go up in flames. <laughs> Problem is, her story eats away at the main core of the overall plot. Completely inconsequential to the entire series. Could have had more time dedicated to Silver Two Team, which are women, I might add. And the other one's black, who's already a fan favorite, and some say should have been the lead. Now, look, I don't blame the actress far from it i think she's pretty talented the writing oh. and her character oh, i mean this this is bad just get how disillusioned she is by herself i took on the man twice my size and won really oh you mean the ex spartan soldier you snuck up on suspecting me that to move your zappy stick that guy i'll fight you all if i have to <laughs> of course you will yeah. for now night night and then we have Master Chief himself. I need a weapon! Um, what? Sorry, Sorry. Sorry. Wrong footage. Now, if you know anything about the Halo game, Master Chief, dude never removes his helmet. It's just, it's just not a thing. You wanna take that thing off? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? All of my diagnostic command and control systems run through here. I need it. And yet you keep taking the darn thing and over, over again. I, I, Why did you do this? I don't know. Uh, uh, let's just laugh at him now. <laughs> Sorry, mate, but I don't know doesn't really cut it. It's okay. I kind of have my own reasons as to why. You see, with the helmet on, he's Master Chief. The epitome of Alpha. Bad to the bone. Instantly recognized. Instantly feared. Respected. Without it. He's, well, not. Which the modern day media would have you believe in is vitally important. Revolutionary. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, right. So we get a Master Chief who talks, he mopes around, he talks some more, he mopes around some more, he looks depressed, he looks tired, he looks fatigued. It's a fancy word for tired. After time, I don't know if it's the actor or the character that's behaving. Now, I get why he wanted to take the helmet off and keep it off as long as he could. This is a show reel for him for his next gig. It's the most high profile thing he's ever done his entire life. And I don't hold that against him. You get that back, Pablo. Unfortunately for him, Carl Urban, even Pedro Pascal, as long as they lasted, were somehow able to create much more depth for their characters with their helmets on during those roles. The Schreiber does having the helmet off for the vast majority of the series. The fact they kept the helmets on, all the more impressive, considering they were both significantly more well known than our boy Pablo Schreiber. 
Who? The other reason he keeps the helmet well, off. He subverts expectations. Doesn't mm. remember that famous tagline. Spoken by the human Funko Pop himself, Ryan Johnson. <laughs> now that's how you subvert expectations. Clearly the makers of this show relished in every opportunity that came to take a on the fans. I mean, how calculated was it to have a big battle at the beginning, right bang in the middle, guarantee you at the very last episode of the season, and with bugger all happening in between, these episodes were just enough of a carrot to keep you coming back for more. <laughs> And as for those epic battle episodes, were they really the gourmet meal equivalent of the type of on-screen mayhem we see when we played the game? Or are they merely dry, crusty, cracker renditions thrown together haphazardly fed to us at the time we were most hungry and funneled for anything? If you're starving and somebody throw you a cracker, you're gonna be like this? God damn, that's the best cracker I've ate in my life! That ain't no regular cracker, was it? What was that, a saltine? God damn, that was delicious. That wasn't no saltine, no, that was, that was, that was, that was, that was the risk. That was, that wasn't a risk. I was like, God, that's the best crack I've ate in my life. Sometimes the anticipation of a thing can make its eventual arrival seem that much more rewarding, albeit temporarily. And then there's the sheer laziness, lack of inventivity shown from episode to episode. The makers pillaged their way through superior sci-fi fare like the pick and mix at your local supermarket. Wasn't that a great scene in Robocop? He walks through his home, he remembers his past. Let's have a bit of that in our show. Great idea. Let's make it into an entire episode. Even better idea. Remember that crazy man of colour in Pandora about in exposition halfway through the movie? Have a bit of that in there too. Tick a few more boxes along the way. You never have too many boxes to Look, all sphere in sci-fi love and war. Paying homage isn't the crime. The fact is, he didn't even need these additional elements. Halo as a franchise had everything you already need. Strong women, strong people of colour. Sometimes I get a feeling you showrunners already had a story you wanted to produce. That Halo was merely filler between those many, many cracks in the plot line. Who would have thought we'd see a more accurate representation of Sonic the Hedgehog on screen than we would Halo? Think aliens with neon hues and you're practically halfway there. How could you possibly screw this up. Shifting the focus so far away from the name of the show has pretty much doomed the storyline this season. Shifting Master Chief's focus away from his actual Master Chief role and more on whatever this is has pretty much doomed the character. You know any retarded war heroes? You in full retard, man. Think about it, if this was a real life scenario, the human race was at war, if soldiers are the elite specimen of humans, Spartans are the elite specimens of soldiers, this version of Master Chief is the elite version of the Spartans. We are going to die! I don't know. Maybe the casting has something to do with it. Maybe if Luke Cage himself was cast as Master Chief, there'll be more gravitas testosterone on display. Then get to tick another box. I mean, let's face it, this is a guy you call when you need to go to war. This, however, is a guy you call when your girlfriend dumps you. Uh, let's just laugh at him now. Although I did laugh when I saw this moment, following Master Chief's realization that he's been betrayed. All this time, he's just staring at Halsey. Reminding me of that scene in Misery. Although I honestly couldn't tell you why. Hi, pumpkin! Speaking of Dr. Katherine Halsey, topping even Quan as an unsavory character, this woman suffers from epic delusions of grandeur. The idea of creating this utopian future inhabited by the perfect specimen of mankind that she will create enemies. That's her entire desire to unlock the secrets of the art, not to save the human race, but to advance it. Alien invasion be So she's dedicated her life to stealing children, grooming them for this future utopia. And if that isn't modern day, I don't know what is. I guess from a studio perspective in these modern times, it will always be a case of why offer you escapism, I can just as easily get you on board. Meanwhile, but look, as far as it being a TV show is concerned, the performances are mixed. I think the actress who plays Halsey, veteran Natasha McElhone. Yeah, she's convinced. Expectantly so. The actress who plays McKee is a real fine. Irish actress Charlie Murphy. Think of all of them, she's the one who's going to go on to do bigger things. These two actresses especially. Cut above the rest. It's like they're acting in a completely different show. I'm sure they wish they were. As for the majority of the rest of them. Frolicking in the park. Oh. 
better left unsaid. Yeah. Story and character wise. Literally nothing to root for here. Quan's Quan. Master Chief is anything but. Speaking of but, the other Spartans are pretty much glorified extras. Covenant are hell bent on wiping out humanity. As far as humanity is concerned, at least in this show, well. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. They're just over the top evil for the sake of being over the top evil. Just modern day Hollywood again attempting to paint villains as sympathetic and heroes as the true villains. <laughs> what were the writers thinking? Everybody knows you never go full retard. Really not. Makes it easy to see how some people can view this as the worst show on TV airing today. No, there is another. You matter. To me. <laughs>